as many as 90% of them can perish. It's bad news for iguanas, but good news for scavengers. And new research has shown that iguanas have evolved a special ability that enables them to survive the famine. Their bodies shrink. They lose not just fat and muscle, but bone. The iguanas can actively reduce their skeletons over just a few months. So we saw that the, that the largest animals were decreasing their body length by as much as 20%. And the magnitude of that means that it can't be simply that they're changing their, their cartilage or connective tissue or, or resorbing muscles. Um, those things together account for about 10% of length. So instead, 20% of shrinkage really indicates that it's got to be the skeleton itself that's decreasing in length. This amazing ability to reabsorb bone in times of hardship is unique to these reptiles. It's the most recent discovery in understanding how the marine iguanas managed to survive on the coastlines of the youngest Galapagos Islands. This is an assassin bug. To us, it's easy enough to spot because it moves to its prey. That's irrelevant, because it smells like one of their number. The assassin sucks its victims dry and glues their empty husks onto its back. This one is already carrying at least 20 corpses. Its irregular shape makes it hard for other predators to spot it and makes it virtually invisible to its prey, ants. It enters this ant colony unchallenged. Its coat of ant corpses masks its own odor. To the ants, it smells like one of their own, and that's what matters. They'll even run straight over the top of it. The assassin simply takes an ant whenever it feels hungry. And the body of each victim then adds to its disguise. The techniques they use can tell us something about the herbivores that try to feed on them. This Echinopsis from Argentina develops long, strong spines as a defense against large grazing animals, llamas. But such defenses also provide hiding places where an insect or a spider can keep out of harm's way. There are other ways in which a plant can protect itself. You can disguise yourself so that you become virtually invisible, as these stone plants have done. These are not pebbles, as you might think. They are living plants. These are lithops from the deserts of Africa, and their markings closely match their surroundings. And what's more, they vary in color according to the rocks on which they grow. That's growing pale rocks, and those on reddish rocks. Or you can load the water you contain with a particularly strong chemical, which animals might find distasteful. This is the peyote plant from Mexico. 
and its sap not only puts off animals but has the property of suppressing pain so the local people use it for that purpose and also in their religious rituals for it's also hallucinogenic one of the most famous species has been something of a mystery until only a few years ago it may look like a tree but in reality this is just a single giant leaf it's called the Titan Arum, and it's a record breaker. But not because of what you see now. In a week or so, that green stem and the leaflets that grow on top will die and rot and disappear. But beneath the surface of the soil, there is a gigantic tuber, and it's from that that the record breaker will emerge. This extraordinary event occurs just once every seven years. It will take two months to complete. But this new growth is neither a trunk nor a leaf. It's the bud of the biggest flower in the world. As it grows, Day after day, a huge spire, the spadix, rises from the center of the developing flower. And then one evening, as darkness falls over the forest, the giant flower opens. This surely is one of the most astonishing of blooms. I first saw one of these amazing flowers growing in the wild in the tropical rainforest of Sumatra. But why are they so big? Well, the function of the flower, like all flowers, is to attract a pollinator. And this plant gives off the smell of rotting flesh. But it does something else. Something you can see with a heat-sensitive camera. This remarkable device reveals something astonishing. White areas at the base of the spa are significantly hotter than the surrounding plant. It's heating up. At its hottest, the spa can reach 37 degrees centigrade, the same temperature as the body of a mammal. And as it warms, something else happens inside the flower at the base of the spire. Hundreds of smaller structures begin to produce stringy pollen. The Titanarum is readying itself for the arrival of pollinating insects. Tiny sweat bees, and probably carrion beetles as well, are attracted by a combination of the powerful smell and the heat. 